This week on Show Me Your News, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate goes gold, the objectively best Pokemon in the Mail Time segment, and Pokemon Stadium rounds out the 23rd week of Smash Blog updates. Masahiro Sakurai, I implore you to... Show me your news! Greetings, Smash fans, and welcome back to Show Me Your News Ultimate, your weekly weekend podcasting source recapping the biggest news in anticipation of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. My name is Peter Spasia, but you may remember me as Yoko. Joining me this week, it's Miles Allen, but you may know him as Super. I'm not going to catch them all. No? Why not? I don't have the game. Well, get on that, and then get on that. Also, it's Tony Mattingly, but you may know him as Tony TH. I'm going to try and catch them all. boy. I can help it because I think I'm the only one that got Pikachu that I know. <laughs> uh, maybe. And then you also know how to trade. We'll talk about that soon. Also <laughs> joining us as a guest this week, it's Corinne Sudberg. You may know her as Megami33. Corinne, welcome back to show Yay. me your news. Yay. Yay. You may be right because I have Evie. So. <laughs> Evie for the win. <laughs> I don't know a single well, person that got Pikachu. Yeah, I, I think the problem is because Eevee's such a different thing, and plus he's got all the different moves, where Pikachu only has like those two. Oh, I get it. Plus, Eevee says, yeah, boy, when you pet him. <laughs> Does he really? Oh, it, it's, it's, you know, a boy, which is like the Japanese, but it sounds like, yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Cute little oh, that too. Oh, my God. It's adorable. <laughs> it's so good. Fun fact, they actually had over like 100 auditions to get the Eevee voice just right. No kidding. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, for one yeah, word of dialogue. Oh, it's like the no like the nuances and the little. Oh, of course. Know. I'm not belittling it. It's just a funny way to think about it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you see Pikachu. It's a character in that game. And so is, so is Eevee. Absolutely. Corinne, welcome back to the show. Uh, we had to have you on to talk about Pokemon. One of the biggest Pokemon fans we know. Ah. Uh, so, you know, we're in this home stretch here for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And, for at least Tony and myself, this is the game that's going to keep us sane for the next little while until December 7th hits. Been playing a little bit about it, and uh, we wanted to have you on the show and talk about it. Sweet. So I wanted to just ask, you know, what's new? What's been going on in your world? Well, I, I moved to Texas last December from New York. Congrats. Uh, thank you. I'm loving it. Been doing little bits and things, uh, but I'm, I'm on Funimation's roster. I got to be an overlord. Which that's been oh, exciting. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I play Arche from uh, the group Foresight, and I got to uh, play next to uh, Vic Mignogna, Michael Jones, and his wife, Lindsay Jones. Yeah, yes. yeah. That's uh, great. So, did that for a bit. I might come back as Etima, the bug maid, because at the end of that episode, spoilers, sorry, they basically take apart my body and she takes my voice box. <laughs> Technically, she's using my voice. So fingers crossed I'll be in season four. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird right. thing to keep your fingers crossed in a, in a voice roll. <laughs> I have I no also... idea what goes on in Overlord, and now I'm very interested because right. somebody oh, got Overlord's taken apart so, and her voice box got sold. So good. Well, basically everyone dies because this guy's taking over the world, but uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the abridging of it. <laughs> uh, speaking of abridging, Sound Cadence and Team Four Star have done a, an animated movie called Hells. And that's premiering. Uh, we're having a little premiere party December 9th showing the movie. And I play a little boy in that named Luca. So that's kind of exciting. There you go. Mm, I'm really happy they got like their dubbing stuff. That's really yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's not like a heavy load, but I'm I'm getting work. I'm making good strides. I also sing the theme song for Banana Cat, too. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. What is that? It's um, it's cats and they're in bananas. Is it like this generation's like bananas in pajamas kind of thing? Or? Look at I, I'm sold. <laughs> as long um, as they're better than the banana birds from Donkey Kong Country 3, I'm, I'm in. Sounds Nottos. adorable. But uh, now my next step is I'm currently looking for an agent and I'm working on a video game reel. So that's cool. And I also do covers on YouTube. I've been doing English adaption covers, but now I'm trying original stuff. And I did, a, I did an original song for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee.
It's awesome. so cute. It's been an earworm <laughs> of mine the last several days. So kudos to you on that one. And absolutely plug the Patreon by all means. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a Patreon that I use to uh, support my covers on YouTube, but I do English adaptions and now I'm doing original songs. It's just $1 per cover. You get like early access to stuff, MP3s of all my songs. The more you put in, the more you get like the instrumentals and voice requests and other stuff in the future. Um, but that's under Megami33. So that is that good shit then. <laughs> and um, other, if you can't support the Patreon, all my music is on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and other stuff. So yeah. Go support Corinne. Absolutely. Yay. Well, let's get into talking about Smash. I mean, just before we jump into the week's big stories, I mean, where's your excitement level for this game? I know you're a big Nintendo fan, so I would imagine there's some interest in Smash for you. I'm not like the top tier Smash player, but I'm Oh, God, I'm no, neither are we. <laughs> no, no, no. It's kind of just weird just because like it's being amped up, but it's not as amped up because like now I'm working part time at a GameStop and it's like... Mm. It mm. just seems kind of like quiet, like right mm. now. But I think like once it's out, everybody's going to be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Something, something calm before the storm. That's but, how I feel. Uh, yeah. After yeah. that last direct between release, it's kind of just we're just waiting. Once you get like a demo in the store, you know. Yeah. I feel like it will also be a good excuse just to go hang out with people. And have oh, I know. Because yes. like everyone I know has been busy. But yet with the smash in the air, they're just like, you know, we can just hang out more or go to. You can play it at cons now and stuff like that. So I'm I'm excited for the explosion of that. Oh, absolutely. Mm. I was in the UK and uh, meeting up with friends there. And we're like, well, there's Mario Kart. But man, I wish there were Smash Brothers. I know. <laughs> Well, let's get into those top Super Smash Brothers stories for the week. Uh, we really know that we're in the home stretch when Super Smash Brothers Ultimate has gone gold. Uh, they are starting to print those cartridges. And, you know, we kind of should have known when people were starting to preload the game. And, like, most of the game is there on their Switch, but it's missing, like, crucial boot code. So, like, people can't mm -hmm. go in and then rift through the data or anything like that. But the game is basically ready. I would imagine they're getting maybe like a day one patch ready in these last couple weeks before, but it's, it's exciting. We're almost there. Yee! Thank God. <laughs> I'm personally like super worried about it getting preloaded to all these consoles. And like, somebody's going to data mine the hell out of it. And we're going to be like, look at these characters that were, that could have been in it because we found this file that said Dixie on it and all this other no. stuff. Mm. <laughs> I'm like, why would you ruin the hype that and way? Gina's actually secretly all... in the game the whole time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh my gosh, we've been speculating so much about DLC. I, just the fact that Piranha Plant is a thing and then we have five characters, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. So I could understand why people were mad about that, but I found that hysterical. Oh, I, it, was, it was amazing. I I'm kind of in the camp of both. I can't wait to play him. I guess because as a Nintendo fan, I just can't get angry anymore because Nintendo could just kind of go one way and then oh, and it's God. just like, what? And it's just like, you kind of just have to get used to it at this point. A little bit. Also, he looks super good. He does. He does. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he might be broken, maybe, like when he's smiling out. Straight up, the one thing that I'm so mad about Piranha Plant is that he's not on the big banner. Oh, you know, that's true. They announced him, and I just like, I really want him in this banner somewhere. <laughs> and, like, to be honest, I wanted him to be like interacting with like Lucas's rope snake or something. Mm -hmm. Just something that would be really kind of fun. Uh, anyway, along with the uh, going gold news, Sakurai had a bunch of different little tidbits here and there. Like he says he wants to talk about the adventure mode, uh, little things like that. So if you're interested, uh, check our show notes, read through on those. But there's not too much interesting there. I'd rather talk about speaking of that big banner. Last week on the show, we were coming off hours of that one minute banner comes alive sort of animated trailer. Mm -hmm. And we we're just like, you know, we we have saw the Queens Don't Stop Me Now mashup. I've watched that like 10 times, by the way. I fucking, it's great. It's so, so good how the lyrics match up with everything. And we were insane, like, no, it's going to be a meme for like at least the next several days, if not weeks. And sure enough, the meme took off. So one week later, <laughs> I kind of wanted to get a sense of like, what have we seen it with? What are some of our favorite mashups? Because a lot of them just seem to naturally work. Yeah. I did watch one that was Brother My Brother from the fucking Pokemon oh movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that one. Um, oh, people, good. people have actually been putting my covers to some of them. Um, That's oh, cool. got to be so cool. The best one that I thought fit was the Super Dragon Ball Heroes that I did with Masako and uh, Mark mm. D. Groot. Mm. That one fits really well. I've one seen thing. Fighting Dreamers. That's That mm -hmm. was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. The one that really jumped out to me that was like 
literally perfect for every shot was I believe the original American Yu-Gi-Oh opening. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> that one worked so well. I my jaw dropped. Like we all thought that Don't Stop Me Now was good. Like the Yu-Gi-Oh that one outright blew it out of the water. Hmm. It was the best. See, I made two of them myself. When I saw the whole meme going on, I was like, all right, there are two songs I can think of. The first of all is if we're talking like an unbroken fight sequence, we got to go Freebird because of Kingsman and that sequence uh, there. And so Freebird, like it, it worked pretty well. Like, I'm oh, sorry, it was, it was funny. But then the iconic Attack on Titan opening the first one, mm-hmm. Gure no Yumiya. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, and then like I, I put it there, it's like, no, this is... This is kind of remarkable. So, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, we're seeing different recommendations in our chat over on showmeyournews.com slash discord. DVD Smith says immigrant song was awesome. Yes. Mm-hmm. Big uh, throwback vibes to Thor Ragnarok. Uh, Kuma Tori says there's one that's just GameCube controller clacking. That's also very good. Jim Sterling did one where it was the basement theme from the Resident Evil director's of cut, course. where of it's course. it's just one of those horrendous, like a horrendous all-timer video game track. And it's just like, you know, it's a terrible song, but God damn it, I can kind of see it working. Have you heard the whole story behind that, where the guy like came out and like said he was deaf and everyone just gave him work because it's just like he yes. was respected. And yeah. then he came out as like actually not deaf. <laughs> he was just a giant fucking troll for 20 years oh it's pretty goodness. amazing wow. fantastic i think martin showed me one with the like i guess the teen titans go had like a rap in the movie or something like that yeah it, it actually times very well especially with Mega Man because it times exactly with cyborg's part oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> solid did you try putting iceberg ball z I don't think the song would fit over the whole thing, but I'm sure, like many other songs, it would also work well. We're getting uh, recommendations also of Mamma Mia, Ed, Ed, and Eddie's sound effects. Look, you can put anything <laughs> over it, and I encourage everyone to. It's, it just makes for great meme fodder. What else are we going to do for three more weeks? <laughs> <laughs> they straight up uploaded the entire video with no music of its own. What the hell did they expect? I hope it was premeditated because it, it it's actually a really be. good idea. It has yeah. to be. It's such a brilliant move. And, you know, at the same time, we said it last week, but we'll reiterate it again. That has to be at least part of the opening cinematic for the game. So while we wait for the game, we are approaching the end of November here. And that means Thanksgiving in the United States. And of course, with Thanksgiving comes Black Friday. Turkey. Oh. Yeah, I mean... Look, the Black Friday deals, they've already begun. It, it's the beginning of the week here. So just save yourself the trouble. Don't go out into the stores. You can find all the deals you want. And if you're somehow missing or do not have a Nintendo Switch in anticipation of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, Nintendo has your back with a couple of deals. Just wanted to point out in most of the retail stores, they are selling Switch bundles with the red and the blue Joy-Con and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That'd be for $300. I think Walmart has an exclusive, though, where it's that same sort of switch with Mario Tennis Aces. And finally, finally, one, two switch bundled in digitally free. Like, how was that not a thing from the beginning? Yeah. But it looks like that is also there. I think also for $300. Megami said you have to work, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> have you worked? I mean, have you worked a Black Friday retail before? Yes, I have. I've I've had 15 years of retail experience actually. Oof. Jesus, yeah, I worked Best Buy one work. year and I wanted to die. Toys are us here. Sometimes you do well acting. You know, you'll get like a gig for like six months or something, and then sometimes it's quiet. So you gotta need a part done. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also, being a freelancer and doing taxes sucks. Oh, oh I can oh, imagine. Man. It's nice oh, to have yeah. that nine to five job. That's yeah, a good hint for you. Uh, a tip for you voice actors out there but um hopefully it's not too bad because like most people are using amazon or something like that mm. what i'm worried about is just mostly like we're probably just going to help parents that are just like my son needs a joy con <laughs> you know just people that like still want the physical copies of things really or they're going to say they want to buy that red dead redemption <laughs> and like how old is your kid they're seven. Oh well okay <laughs> 
well, they probably shouldn't play mm. that. It's like, are you telling me what to do? No, ma'am, uh, here. And then they'll come back later and asking for a refund because mm-hmm. I didn't tell them it was bad, even though I did. But yeah. whatever. <laughs> if I recall correctly, Peter, you had a story about somebody wanting like Mario for Xbox or something. No, like no, no, no. No, no, it was, I worked at Toys R Us in 2010. But yeah, someone came in and asked for Mario on PSP. And it's like, oh, huh. oh, you poor soul. <laughs> So yeah, you definitely get an interesting clientele in retail. I'm sure all over the world. Some lady was getting Sonic and the Black Knight on Wii. And I'm like, hey, get Sonic Colors. It's the same fucking price. Like, don't do that to your kids. <laughs> was someone going to ask, like, is Martin Lawrence in this one? <laughs> oh, no. That'd be better, honestly. The only weird customer I got recently was uh, this guy was looking for a sniper game. And he's like, yeah, hey, you got a PlayStation 4 so I could check this out on? I was like, uh, no, we don't, sir. He's like, well, how am I supposed to know it's good or not? <laughs> I was, just kind of, uh, I was just kind of dumbfounded. And I was like, think of answers, Corinne. I was like, but they all sound sarcastic. <laughs> I know. May I introduce you to the internet? <laughs> I got my manager to handle that because every go. every option was like, no, he's going to take it too personally. Uh, just throw the game informer at his head. Well, I was thinking like, well, it's luck of the draw, sir. Or you can always check it out on YouTube. Or, you mm-hmm. know, sometimes you got to give things a try. And it's like, they all sound terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's no good answer. The last time I saw something like that, a demo kind of thing, it was either like the demo disc at a Walmart or way, way back in the day when I was like seven years old, they had a Genesis set up at my local family video so you could try the game beforehand. That was the best part because the guy was like, oh, I'll go somewhere else to, to find it, like movie trading company. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, because they, they do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, wherever you are out there, be safe on Black Friday. Uh, get the deals you want. Real quick, is there anything that you have your mind or eye on out there in the video game world, certain deals. I know like I'm, I think this may be the time I jump on PlayStation VR. I've got my eye on that $200 bundle. I do want to signal boost yeah. that there's a lot of places doing PS4 deals for $200. Some with the Spider-Man bundle. Oh, yeah, so get, look get into that. that. That's, that's GameStop. Yeah, I've seen it a lot of places though. It's not just like, it's everywhere. I saw it at Walmart, Best Buy. Like it's, yeah, they're that's throwing those things one. away this week. That's a really good one. Um, but the VR bundle is also pretty good. But I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not really into VR too much. Um, I'm not either. I don't know. I'm just kind of using my money for Smash. And then, I mean, I wouldn't mind a Pikachu and Eevee Joy-Con. If oh, they have any of those. That, those yeah. would be they just look They just look really cute. But uh, I'm pretty happy. I mean, Alex got Red Dead, my boyfriend. So we're pretty much set on games. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's smash this out. It's going to be like, well, this is good for 300 hours an hour. We're going to be all right. <laughs> well, that, well, that's what's funny about it. Because the holiday season, there's not that much games coming out for the holiday. They've already come out. Like, mm-hmm. the only thing that's really big that's coming out in December is Smash. Like, Fallout's already out. Spider-Man's already out. Yeah. A lot of stuff got delayed till February. Like, a lot. That, that's it, too. Yeah, because everyone's like, oh, what about Kingdom Hearts? It's like, well, that's not until January, so. <laughs> Don't remind me. <laughs> oh, we had a, me and Super had a bet that it wouldn't come out this year. And he Aww. lost. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah, going to say delayed for another month. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be too surprised. Well, let's burn through what is usually the crux of the Smash Brothers news this week, but it's becoming less and less over time. It's the Smash Blog updates. We start on, oddly enough, not uh, Sunday. They kind of pushed... The first update back a day, but on November 12th, today's fighter number 49, Little Mac. As a boxer, Little Mac fights with his fists alone, no kicks. When his power meter fills up, he can use a special KO uppercut, which can really turn a battle around. For his final smash, he turns into Giga Mac and pummels the opponent with a furious rush of punches. So, Corinne, our thing we've been noticing when we read these each and every week is there seem to be different types of interns that write these because sometimes you'll get spelling errors. Sometimes it'll be very bland. And then you get weird ones like this where he fights with his fist alone, no kicks. I'm like, well, I'm I'm glad you had to add that in the little description there. (laughs) He's a boxer. (laughs) (laughs) In case you didn't know. He's not an MMA fighter. Just a boxer. Which still makes me mad when he was boxing Ken in his trailer and Ken throws a Hadouken. I'm like, that's not fucking fair. <laughs> it's cheating. They might be saying it as like a match. So it's just like, you know, no kicks below the belt or something. Maybe right, like right. You right. do a thing there. I don't know. If he doesn't kick, I've never noticed that. And that's probably like really limiting to the dev team. <laughs> yeah, especially since you can tell he doesn't miss leg day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no. He's a little guy, but he works out. <laughs> 
for all the running boxes have to do absolutely mm-hmm. and you can and i do love the, the little nod in his uh character video where he's wearing his you know pink hoodie and sweatpants yep. and he's chasing over after wario on the bike <laughs> yep yep pretty amazing and there's a a rather s- silly moment beforehand where he he knocks sonic off the cliff with his side B, and he up these immediately. And I'm in the back of my head, I'm like, he's not recovering from that. Oh no, he's gonna die. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, you know, he's he's dead there. And like Sonic is going to be 100 fine. He is he is a dead man. Yeah, of course. You mentioned with the bike when it's got to be on Elden uh, Bridge of Elden, where it's mm-hmm. just the longest path there. It's it's not you know <laughs> New York or whatever, but it'll do. I wish the bridge collapsed in the middle. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man! And the screenshots over on his fighter page are really cute. One of them's the uh, he's visiting Doctor Mario, and he's all scuffed up. And Doctor Mario's like, "Have a pill." This is all I prescribe. I got like cuts and everything all over, but have a pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all better. <laughs> Rub it on your scratches. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Does, does Little Mac like have like bandages disappear on him after like hundred percent? I don't know. Uh, That's a good I mean, question. Yeah, he's obviously got a bandage and a bruise, so I'm imagining that after 100%, he does have new textures. See, it's things like this. Why don't they put that in the update? That would actually be interesting and new to learn. Right. So you like, find a witty way to write it. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's what happens to him in like the fucking Wii game. They all yeah. get him and his opponents get like more beat up and bruised the longer the fight goes. Yeah. Like that'd be really great. Like it, I hope that is the case. Poor Ganondorf getting punched like that. He's like, Wah! that's a good picture. It doesn't really stack up to Ganondorf's pain face from Brawl, hmm. which I don't know if anyone really like zoomed in on Ganondorf's face in Brawl, but man, when he took pain, he had the best expression on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it was my background to my desktop for probably a good two years. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. So yeah, overall, it's good to see Little Mac. Uh, you know, we're kind of running down on characters overall to be featured on the blog. But yeah, you really got to highlight that he can't recover that well. And maybe with the directional air dodge, that'll help a little bit more, but not much more. He's still pretty fun, but yeah, he's yeah. That that's a big problem in a platform fighter is not being able to get back on the platform. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's get to the music update this week because it was apparently second this week. Again, kind of mixing things up. Today's music on November 13th. You can now listen to Seascape. The tune you know and love from Splatoon is now in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Hirokazu Tanaka's new arrangement lends the track a more relaxed, mature vibe. Not exactly how I'd describe it, but okay, let's listen (laughs) to that excerpt. So what do you guys think? Because I don't really like it. <laughs> it's fine and serviceable, but I'm not a, familiar with the original. The original arrangement has way more energy and has a better instrumentation, which is important in a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> they took out the like fast paced guitar tempo and I'm like, why? Hmm. I hope the game that's like my favorite song. I hope the game is in there untouched and I can just turn this one off. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, they, they assume that, you know, we know and love it. And I'm like, Okay, I know some songs from Splatoon. I played on maybe a little bit of it, but yeah, I don't don't know this one. I can see this one working. We're not true better. nerds. <laughs> Did you play Splatoon a lot? Not really. <laughs> I'm really fucking bad at it, so I just take the roller and just like paint the ground. I'm like, don't fight me. I'm bad at shooting stuff. <laughs> I played arms more than Splatoon. I felt like oh. no one played arms. <laughs> oh man, that's been like a running joke for me on the show. <laughs> like whenever they show arms stuff, I'm like, nobody, nobody played arms. <laughs> I, I kind of liked it. I'm kind of sad. Well, if they had a freaking story to it, it probably would have been more interesting. Oh, it really would have. Mm. We had someone pointing out, I think it was uh, Grimace the Menace in our Discord chat, they're like, yeah, Tony, ARMS actually sold really well. <laughs> I, it still didn't crack a million, though, did it? Like, I'm pretty sure it did. Okay, here's my argument then. If it's sold respectably or not, no one talks about ARMS. Megami's the first person I've heard, like, I played ARMS and I liked mean, it. <laughs> uh, for the convention scene, uh, I've seen people play it at conventions, if that helps. That's okay. When I went to a Smash kind of a tournament, sign. one of the side tournaments was ARMS. Yeah, so, I mean, ARMS is... 
relevant and around. It's just not, you know, number well, one. Well, I don't leave my house and that's my fault, I guess. I'm sorry. Everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I think you do have a point though. I mean, if it's a, a more relaxed and mature vibe, is that really the rendition of the song you want from a fighting game? I hope they pick other tracks too. As Splatoon's music is really good. I'm not super bad. I love the fandom, like you said, and I love all the like fan art, like the squid designs are really cool. But yeah, there's some good music and I hope I hope there's a lot of good the other point music. Is- with these type of games, like even if you're not engrossed in every single thing that Nintendo does, someone is going to enjoy something from one of those fan bases. You know? 100%. So, even though the stage is really bad, <laughs> <laughs> the stage is just like eight levels and it's just like great. We played on it, it was bad. Yeah. Hip Tanaka, though, this that's who the guy is, like a ton of NES music work uh, to his credit. Uh, so, whether it's Urban Champion or Gyromite or Metroid or Kid Icarus, or uh, Tetris, even. The guy's gone around, so he's uh, he's out there and uh, definitely has some good work to his name. It's it's not a bad like arrangement. It's just not as good, and that's yeah. what's disappointing to me about Before it. Before the show, the way it opens up made me get it's like, hey, this seems like a Mega Man X track. And then it just kind of like doesn't go anywhere, and I'm like, oh, it's a Mega Man X6 track. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, we're going to talk about Pokemon soon, but let's talk about Pokemon Stadium today's stage on November 13th. Pokemon Stadium PS1. After 10 years, it's back. In addition to the basic stadium formation, the stage also switches between fire, water, rock, and grass variations. If you want to win on this stage, you'll have to alter your strategy based on the current formation. Or turn off hazards. <laughs> well, that that too. Yeah, I hope that if they've done and built it from the ground up, uh, that a lot of the weird glitches that happened in Melee on <laughs> PS1 are where you kind of fall through the floor a little bit. Hope those are gone. Yeah, or like during like the rock transformation on the right side, you couldn't like get up on the lip. Hmm. It was on like a different plane, so you get stuck on it like it's a platform, and it's just like a mm. free smash attack for like anyone. Hmm. I hate that little tree and fire because you can like just hide behind it and no one can do anything and anyway, everyone just has to wait. Or you're Marth and you can just barely stick your sword through the entire tree. That's <laughs> not fair. Yeah, and then it's always it's hitting tippers. The windmill kind of sucks too. Mm-hmm. Like rock form kind of sucks entirely. I'm really surprised there's four pictures for this stage. Yeah. And for some reason, rock they didn't put is rock. not there. <laughs> No, they did not. And, you know, normally when stages can get multiple, we we go back and we keep thinking. If they keep talking about the no hazards and the Omega Final Destination form and the some people I think have called it like the Alpha, but the Battlefield form. It's like if you want to add multiple pictures to kind of show the stage off, like this is where you should do it. Mm-hmm. I just got one important question. Where's my Pokemon balloons? <laughs> I mean, we need Poke Floats so badly. And I think that's for everyone saying, like, what stages are missing? There's uh, Rainbow Road, which is a 3DS stage. I don't think anybody likes floats, but oh, man. I don't know. It's no, everyone cool. loves Poke Floats. It's insane. Oh, good, good. It's great. Good. Okay. I, I'm not alone on that then. Great. <laughs> no, that's like we've we talked. That's like the gravest omission from the stage list is Poke Floats, honestly. Mm, okay. It's the second most great. The- What's the other one? Pac Maze. Pac Man sucks too oh, because Pac Land is in there. That's what's yeah. irritating about That's, that. That is what mm-hmm. is bad about that one. Yeah. Nobody likes Pac Land. Some people, unironically, us, us included, love Poke Floats, but some uh, for the others, it's it's an ironic love. Like you can't hate on Poke Floats. There's the rumors going around for a while when people were making things up on Four Chance, like they're going to do an updated version of Poke Floats. And they're going to have all different generations represented. <laughs> all 800 Pokemon will be. <laughs> they will float by. It'll be a never ending <laughs> scroll. There's one section where it's like you're on it and then all the balloons collide and it's just instant kill for anybody. Oh, man. <laughs> I love that. Or it's just like a whole minute of unknowns because like we're going to put every single variation of unknown in there. Didn't they kind of already do that with the original? Yeah, they kind of did. They, they bo- a bunch float by. Yeah. Like you, get a special, you get a special spirit if you last through the whole stage through all <laughs> of the Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it, it pops up on the challenge board. <laughs> you get a mega spirit for waiting that long. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's you are a Pokemon master. Not for <laughs> not for getting the Pokedex in the game, for enduring this. They wouldn't even have to update the models. I would take shitty Pokefloat models. Yeah. Like <laughs> I would jump on them. I'd be happy. Just give me the Pokemon Go models. They're already there. 
Yeah. yeah. Like a lot of generations. So well, it's really hard to import 3D models from what he told us. So I don't know anymore. I, I guess so. The trophies were too hard. <laughs> this stage does look good, though. Let's yeah. let it. Let yes. us throw that yes. out. This stage looks amazing. It's better than Pokemon Stadium, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I hope that the windmill is not solid this time through. Hmm. Because yeah, in Brawl, it was weirdly solid. And it would push you, yeah. 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 It would push you unless you held down. If you held down, you'd just go through it. Strange. Yeah, it was a very strange thing. But I mean, I really love it. I love the water effects. I really love like how you can see like little streams going through the grass form. Like It is such a pretty stage. And I love like the background camera, and it looks like you've got that uh, camera on a camera on a camera on a camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The never-ending screen. <laughs> the whole thing makes me happy. Absolutely. It'll be a good stage and certainly one that competitive play will use. Let's get to the next update. Wednesday, November 14th, today's item, Akira Assist Trophy. From the original Virtua Fighter game, Akira joins the battle with the same graphic style from his original appearance. He has a wide variety of attacks at his disposal, but none represent him better than his Tetsuzanko. When he leaves the fight, he says his signature line, (laughs) asterisk, which I think is a first in these Uh updates. By the way, Bayonetta's forward throw is also based off of Tetsuzanko. What's his signature line? Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I I just came back from a friend's house uh, yesterday. He was playing uh, Yakuza Kiwami 2. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Virtua Fighter is like all in there. Like, you can just play Virtua Fighter. The whole game? Like, the whole game. All Great. the fighters. There's, like, submissions and stuff where you beat, like, an old man at the game and he gives you, like, $10,000 or something like that. Oof. And it's it's so crazy and funny. And, by the way, this game is broken stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Virtua Fighter, not Yakuza. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Yakuza is stupid, but Yakuza that's the itself. But, like... Holy crap, I played this for a good, like, 15 minutes trying to beat one single computer opponent. But they input read you so hard, and I still don't understand why, like, I understand the concept of counter hits. Like, oh, I threw out a move, it missed, and you hit me before the move came back, so I take more damage. I understand that. But when a single three-hit combo takes away 80-plus percent of my max health from zero, it's just like, okay, I'm done. Damn. Yeah, like, I don't understand what's going on. And this is why we don't play traditional fighting games. Oh, no, I'm bad. <laughs> yes. Cyberlink420 with the assist in the chat saying Akira's quote is Junin Hayain Dayo, which is your 10 years too early translated. And there's apparently a 1 in 100 chance that Bayonetta says it when you use that move. So the forward That's throw. fucking crazy. I mean, Sakurai. Yeah, and it is neat to see, like, a Sega assist trophy. Sega Saturn representation. Right? I would have rather had Sega Toss and Shiro, but we all would. <laughs> Cross your fingers, DLC. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and missed opportunity? He's fighting Richter? Dude, we complain about this every time someone does an uppercut to someone not named Ryu. <laughs> but I mean, it's just like they talk about that it's ripped from Bayonetta, and then it's like, we'll have him hit Richter with it. And it's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like either Bayonetta or Ryu would have made more sense here. And then just Richter. And I'm just kind of like, but you, he looks like Ryu. <laughs> He's Sega Ryu. He kind of is, isn't he? And Richter more looks more like Jonathan Joestar than anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's good to have Sega representation. I know people are still sour over that other Sega assist trophy of Shadow that <sighs> appeared, but uh, this one, yeah, we've seen it in the uh, the Me Fighter costume from the last game, so we knew it was kind of going to continue in some way, at least going forward. The other update from this day on the 14th is another Spirits update, because we got three last week, so why not another one this week? Primary Spirits come in different types. Attack, shield, and grab. Attack has an advantage over grab. Grab has an advantage over shield. And shield has an advantage over attack. Try to equip spirits that are strong against your opponent's spirit team. I'm a little surprised they didn't go for, like, a Fire Emblem reference. You'd think so, right? Because I'm like, that's the same colors, same triangle, same everything about it. Lances, swords, and (laughs) axes, and all that. Eh, 
Swords is still red and everything. <laughs> we talked about this, though. Since they gave us the quick equip, we're just going to hit Y and let the game figure it mm-hmm. out for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do all that math every time. I don't need all of these gotcha mechanics in this, but you know, if you can set things on auto, yes, absolutely, by all means. Megami, what do you think about the spirits replacing like the trophies and whatnot? You mean the stickers or whatever? <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> I mean, I remember dabbling in a little bit of them, but I mean, they're not necessary. And I mean, as a just a person that just kind of pure fights like, without items and everything, I mean, it's kind of the same game for me. You know, I'll, I'll use them if somebody else wants to use them, but otherwise, eh. Well, it's more the uh, the like how they replace the one player aspect of like, do you, do you like mess with the one player stuff in Smash very much, or do you just play your friends? I kind of just play my friends with it. That's yeah, I'm like alone on the show with that one. I, just, I love collecting all the I'm dumb sorry things. I have in friends. It. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! That burn though. <laughs> Damn, she's roasting me. <laughs> sorry. No, you're okay. I know. It's but I I mean I've played with friends all the fucking time, but I love just like I'm gonna play classic with everybody and beat Master Hand with it. Like I love that shit for some reason. I don't know why. It's just I have a lot of fun with it. I guess and it just can, helps too because I go to I go to so many conventions, whether I'm a guest or not, and I'm just I'm always playing Smash with like a bunch of people or something. So that's gonna be so good to have it portable, like on an actual I know good system that'll be comfortable play. Do you have any idea how like waiting in lines for big panels usually Team Four Star in memory, but you know, uh, <laughs> but like now you'll have your Switch and you'll be playing Smash with everyone there. Exactly. Um, yeah. That's going to be so wild. Oh, man. I mean, I'm going to MAGFest. We're probably going to be playing Smash like 24-7. Nice. (laughs) That sounds like fun. Absolutely. Like I've said before, like I'm still super into spirits just because like, oh, one player mode is literally event matches and it's just event matches. I think it's it's one of those things that I need to like just actually try for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they explained it weird. They explained that in the story mode kind of weird. It's so weird to me that I'm like, "Uh, okay, I'm just going to play the story and but like yeah. maybe once I get into it, I'll be like, oh, okay, I sort of get what you're saying. So yeah. I, I believe Reggie mentioned offhand that this is going to be an adventure mode with story. So the world of light part, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's world. what I love about certain fighting games. It's like it's not just a fighting. Like we got this cool adventure and the collectibles and mm-hmm. all that. Like there's, there's plenty to do just to you know, just fight. You know, yeah. yeah. We talked a lot about it on the direct rollout that they like almost did it backwards so that they didn't spoil the story mode. They're like, they talked about them being stickers for way too long. And then it's like, yeah. that sucks. And then it's the more I watched the footage of like, well, there's all these event matches and the rewards for this. And and then you get the story mode in your brain. It's like, oh, okay, this is probably going to be pretty fun to actually collect. But yeah, it's just a dumb thing I particularly care about because I like playing alone too. Hmm. <laughs> Let's get to the last update of the week. It's another character. Today's fighter, number 27, Meta Knight. This fighter not only has tons of quick moves, he can perform a midair jump five times. All his special moves have a recovery aspect, so use them at the right time. His final smash is Darkness Illusion, which unleashes a fast series of aerial attacks. That kind of reminds me, like, his was, I think, the last final smash I saw, and it was someone putting out a video compilation. And a lot of them have that kind of Greninja sort of style final smash where it's like knock him up in the sky and then cross, 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 like all these fast attacks. And then one final one, it seems to be like a running theme for some of them in this game. Just a big dragon ball flurry, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. It's Meta Knight. I, Meta Knight is still <laughs> really said, good. <laughs> He's still really good. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. The best thing in this video is him doing that crazy flurry and uh Toon Link coming by and doing his little flurry yes. taunt where he gets tired and gets hit. That's the only thing I really liked about it. <laughs> I love the character moments. I really do. Well, this picture of him with a lightsaber is kind of neat. Yeah. The one thing they don't show is the tornado. Which is kind of the most important thing. I was just thinking to myself, like, the how many times we saw it in Brawl. Uh, it, it did dominate the Brawl metagame, for sure. Mm. Metagame. <laughs> uh, and the Brawl updates. Uh, We've already shown you his moves. Yes, good times. Uh, he does have some of the better alternate costumes, though, and we see Galacta Knight in one of the last screenshots there. Like, so happy. Whenever they take the extra effort to make it more than just a color palette swap, like, got to appreciate those references. What about this picture of him with a dark like black Kirby with yellow eyes? Because when Meta Knight's mm-hmm. mask comes out, he's always a little cute Kirby under there. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I think that reference is. It's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It is 100% the reference, but I'm like, I'm a little weirded out that, like, the Meta Knight Kirby is a darker shade of purple. Yeah. 
It's weird. So, Meta Knight, whenever Meta Knight's mask comes out, I like almost forget it, and I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> weird. Ah, oh, you're cute. I know, it's very strange. He's so serious and has a Spanish accent. In the God damn it, I was just going to go right there. It always reminds me of right back at you. You mean the best accent? The best Meta Knight? No, it's just the best DDD. Though. I was saying the, the DDD is the best. Let's be real. They're both the best, okay? Spanish Eric Stewart, though, man. Mm-hmm. Well, that's basically the gist of the Smash Brothers news this week. Uh, I mean, as we lead up, into the weeks, you know, leading up to the release of the game, I'm sure there'll still be embargoes that are still going to be lifted. They're they're going to start rolling out more and more of a push. It may seem like the calm before the storm, but we'll keep an eye out for news and uh, let you know in the weeks coming up here. But let's transition. We have Corinne here to talk about Pokemon. Let's go, uh, Tony and I. We're diving into past the time. Super. Hello. You say you don't have the game, so I wonder if you can play a devil's advocate role here. I will 100% play that role. I will do it with malicious. I mean, uh, I will happily do that for okay, you, sir. Okay, well. Uh, Corinne, let's start. Let's see. Where are you in your adventure at this point in time? We're only, uh, what, a couple days into you know, post-release. Came out uh, Friday. I will just point out, though, that I don't speak for every Nintendo fan because I understand that. Because I don't want to say, like, as a casual Pokemon fan, I love this. I'm sure people are tired of a statement like that, mm-hmm. you know, if there's a certain type of Pokemon fan that's more competitive and stuff like that. So just putting that out there is my opinion. Yes. Yeah, you're just talking for yourself. That's fine. No, I'm just putting it out there because I know a Pokemon fan, there's there's different types of fan. There's the competitive, oh, there's the mm-hmm. casual, there's the collecting, the shiny hunters, all that jazz. So it makes the game great. I'm pretty casual. I just finished getting my third badge from Lieutenant Surge. Now I'm just kind of playing around with comboing and uh, collecting different mons. I've been actually streaming it on my Twitch channel, too. Oh, nice. Ooh. Um, okay. So that's as far as I've gone. And I've, I've mostly been trying it out with the, the different methods. So I've played it with the, the tablet. I played mm. it with the Joy-Cons. And I've tried it with the Pokeball Plus. Oh, neat. Um, you have the Pokeball Plus. That's interesting. Yes. How's it with that? Control-wise, it's fine. It's it's definitely a little finicky. If you want to get a good Pokeball shot, you got to make sure, like, I always put my my elbow on my leg yes. and then just kind of toss it. So that's been, like, the best format for me. Angle shots are not that great. And sometimes like once you do the get ready button, it like you're in that position and there'll be a Pokemon like on your left side and you're like, uh <laughs> <laughs> I also noticed that with the Pokeball Plus, it's very finicky to pet Eevee with it. I'm better at it now, but in the beginning, mm. like I probably have a clip on it for my Twitch, <laughs> but I'm just kind of like that shit. I was like, uh uh it took me forever to get a berry. Like <laughs> <laughs> how are the uh the sounds that come out of it? Does that help the immersion oh. at all or? Yes, it's very, it's very satisfying. Okay. <laughs> I forgot enjoy, about that. Yeah, I enjoy catching them, hearing them. When you charge it too, it, it does the Pokemon Center noise too. Oh, nice! Does it? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um, oh. no, catch, catching's great. Moving around's pretty good. Um, you can't sort anything when you're with the Pokeball Plus, so that's kind yuck. Of mm. uh-huh. Um, but that's just a minor thing. The camera also doesn't really move with the Pokeball Plus with with the tablet. At least, like it's better to like get traction of the Pokemon, but that makes sense because you're you're connected with the system as mm-hmm. opposed to just the controller. My favorite was just like having to tilt the camera up to get to Onyx. Oh yeah, <laughs> to get the right part to Onyx. So that was kind of fun with the different sizes and stuff like that. God, Onyx is ridiculously massive. The music's great. Uh-huh. I mean, it's it's the same music, yes. but like a little bit updated. It's very nice, very calming. Models look great. Everything mm-hmm. looks pretty good. It's really cool seeing them just walk around. Pokemon has always had that weird issue with sizes. It's always been weird uh, inconsistency with the sizes of mm-hmm. Pokemon. So some Pokemon you look back and you're just like, wow, like I didn't realize a slowpoke is that freaking big. Like yeah. you could like I made a joke about that on my Twitch stream. Like you could actually ride a slowpoke and you wouldn't want to because <laughs> Yeah. Anywhere. But they're just big enough that you probably could ride one. The funniest one was today were seeing a Mr. Mime walk huh. out of the patch of grass. Oh god, that is actually creepy. It's very <laughs> it's very creepy, and they're just like as tall as you, so it's even yeah. creepier. Like they're just this just walking thing like this. it was very weird to me are mimes like outside of what route 21 outside or south of pallet for me they're right next to vermilion like yeah, right to it, the right it's in, it's in vermilion yeah there's okay. a bunch of them they're just walking around with drowsies and eradicates oh. I, I do i do love that one you retweeted where you're on i believe the ssm 
Oh my god, that's hysterical! Yeah, that one's my favorite so the far. The Mister Mime, just because he's you know they're doing their their typical poses. If you leave them for a while, and Mister Mime is touching this kid's face, but he's, <laughs> he's just miming. <laughs> he did a similar thing on my Twitch stream where like I had a cadaver and he looked like he was touching my cadaver's butt <laughs> <laughs> or giant tail thing or whatever weird it's butt like, thing. Yeah, yeah. What is it about butt things? Because doing that a little side thing in Pewter City where you hang out with the slowpoke and certain angles are like. Why are you looking at his butt? What, what the hell? I was, I, I've said that too. It's just like this lady's like poking. It's like, okay, I'll stare at its ass for like five minutes. Yeah. So. <laughs> I really um, like the small ones when it's like, it's huge when it's like a diglet and it's like, yes. it's huge. It's a huge diglet. I'm like, it's not that big still. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's nice. It's nice being able to decide if I want to engage something or not. It's nice yes. to dodge zoo bats now. Mm -hmm. And like I said, some sizes are pretty neat. Like when you're trying to find something and it's very small in the grass. And then like a large Pokemon. But like I said, some sizes are a little jarring to me. I mean, Clefable. Oh it was huge. I mean, we yeah. ran into that in Mount Moon and it was shocking. That was a surprise to me too. Yeah, I didn't realize I was going to run. I ran into two of them, hmm. actually. I mean, we didn't catch one. It was like a level seven. It was like a pure red and I <laughs> couldn't get that at all. It ran away. But yeah, that, uh, was, that was surprising to see pop up. What got me is there's Chanseys there too. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing here? I <laughs> man. I found a Chansey in the Diglett cave, actually. That was kind of Yeah, weird. me too. Yeah. They're rare spawns, like, pretty much everywhere. So, for me, as far as my progression, uh, I am about to start the rocket dig sort of thing in Cerulean, about to make my way south uh, okay. to Vermilion. You know, beat Misty easily. Though, her Pokemon lineup with the Psyduck and the Starmie, that kind of <laughs> threw, threw me for, for yeah. That threw me for a loop, too, yeah. actually, yeah. Considering her side duck is like the worst side duck in the world. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay, this is we're gonna see some changes here, and then of course, you know, shouts out to the uh, Lily, uh, Violet, and Daisy as her junior trainers. Uh, shouts out to the water flowers reference. That's that's always really cool. And those that sweet dive animations yeah. they had to do. That might have also been Masuda's like little mm. jab with it because he actually really likes side duck. Oh um, yeah. I actually I actually heard a fun fact that he actually wanted to do Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Psyduck. Really? And oh, man. One of the reasons why they didn't do it was because, oh, we can't have two stars as yellow Pokemon. Let's just let's do Eevee because people like Eevee. I'm sure there were other other reasons, but that was one that I've overheard. So. That's really funny. Really interesting. And then seeing that tweet out there that's like, let's go to Johto for like if they do a, a, a sequel. And it's like, oh, geez, you could yeah, really do that for sure. I really should just do DLC patches. Yeah, honestly, yeah. at that point, yeah, probably. It all goes down south once you start getting into Waylord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, yes. I mean, Onyx is already so big. Then you get Steelix, which is even bigger. And then somebody is just like, I'm going to ride my Waylord around. And I'm like, great, that's going to be some public destruction. It was funny because I was riding my Arcanine around. And then I was like curious about like, it's just going to jump on the SSN. But um, it was actually too big to walk around with me on the boat. I had to pick a smaller Pokemon. Really? Huh. So like, even, though I, had, even though I had Arcanine chosen as out of the ball, it, it just disappeared. Hmm. And I was like, oh, I guess I guess it's too big. So <laughs> I haven't had many follow me around, but it, there's I mean, a I funny like Ridley. Not Ridley, no. There's a funny like NPC house that just has an onyx like sticking through the roof. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I visit that house. Yeah. And I was just like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. But no, I always have a Pokemon around because eventually like one of them finds like a berry or something in a yep. bush or something. Yep. Um, that freaked me out too. At first I thought it was kind of dumb because do you realize that the item finder is actually your partner's tail? No. I what? didn't know that, huh? So this I, I learned by accident while uh, streaming it. I was noticing for a while that Evie's tail was wagging a lot. I'm like, okay, maybe it just kind of has different animations. And then I noticed that it was doing strange movements. So I kept experimenting and I was like, this is the item finder. Get the fuck out of here. That's fucking cool. So it was a little annoying because of certain perspective that you couldn't, sometimes you couldn't see Evie's tail, but like if you're walking forward, you could sort of see it sticking up a little bit, but it's better if you kind of turn around and see it from the back. It was a little finicky, but I figured it out. So yeah, that's the, that's the item finder. I got to go back to that hidden, that long tunnel with, all the shit in it because oh, I couldn't yeah, find like, anything. There's like three nuggets in there and a pearl. Wow. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I can go back. Pokeballs for days. <laughs> but um, also, if you have a Pokemon out, though, they'll occasionally find berries for you. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I've had Pokemon fall me around, but only like normal. It's like not like a crazy big one. It's like mm-hmm. been Vulpix and Gloom the whole time. I've also tweeted out, and I think they did this on purpose too, with getting payday earlier, that you should teach a, a Pokemon payday and use that because as much as it's like chiller to catch Pokemon and get experience that way, you're going to waste a lot of Pokeballs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So you're going to need money and. Having Pikachu, Pikachu can learn Payday. The Mew that you get from the Pokeball Plus can learn anything, so that can learn Payday. Meowth, certain Pokemon can learn it, but yeah. Turn it on my, on my Mankey too. Having at least some of those before, like, because I don't know if we're gonna get Amulet Coin or something, but like, right. I don't. But uh, yeah, having something that knows Payday and having those battles will help you get some extra extra muns. For so. sure, because it's it's definitely shocking the imbalance uh, between the experience that you can get from catching Pokemon and then uh, the trainer battles. Like, ugh, like the experience yields not great for a lot of those. Yeah, no. well, that's why you got to find those. Uh, you got to find like a bunch of chances or like certain Pokemon mm-hmm. to get like a nice boost. It's also really funny when you beat up a kid and you're not only taking their money but you're taking three Pokeballs from yeah. them as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> give me that. These are mine too. (laughs) It's honestly the best yield from the battles is getting Pokeballs, honestly. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. That's true. They're so valuable now. Yeah. Because that's basically your number one go for just like getting experience now. And at Mm -hmm. least they like have the costs of the balls and marts. So uh, like that that helps. Yeah. And also, at least like there's a reason why you can catch the same Pokemon over and over again. So that way you can get IV or you could try to get a shiny. So they're, so it doesn't like, it's not like you get candies. Yeah. Like it's like, oh, I have to keep catching. It's like, no, there's good points to getting it you know Mm -hmm. to doing it over and over again so yeah i wanted to touch back on the the pokemon following because the first one i discovered was bellsprout and let me tell you bellsprout following you around with its little legs that is something that's pretty funny (laughs) gloom's funny too (laughs) yeah one of the funniest was uh was ekans to me i don't know if it was in my game but he does glitch he does clip through the ground a bit (laughs) but he's he's so like small He's not like that big, so he just looks like a weird long worm following yeah, you. Yeah, and he definitely hides well in the grass. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't look like a snake. There's a snake in my boots. <laughs> <laughs> so something that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but it's like, you know, I, I should have known. It was I was doing a little bit of reading, and I'm like, oh, the, you know, there's the NPC that mentions the Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest. And I'm like, is there really a Bulbasaur in Viridian Forest? And yeah, sure enough. It's a rare spawn, but Bulbasaur is in Viridian. Mm-hmm. I got one. I got one. Charmander's on Route 3 and 4, and uh, Squirtle's on Route 24 and 25. And you got to play that rare spawn game, you know, get your catch streak up, you know, maybe throw a lure out there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get them. And I went and I got that Bulbasaur. I got that Charmander. I got that Squirtle in those locations. And sure enough, you get to Cerulean and you do some digging and it's like, oh, Right, this is pretty much a Pokemon Yellow remake. <laughs> exactly, and then you forget. Yeah. But no, I like I did the same thing, but like I wanted to see if I could get them and see different traits from them and stuff. Mm-hmm. Even though the ones you you get have pretty good stats anyway. And then Charmander takes until level thirteen to learn Ember. What the hell? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, you back can. In my day, that's what you had to do. Yeah, you were right. But the other thing about it too is like now it's pretty easy to have like get three and have one of every evolutionary set if you're mm-hmm. trying to do that. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah, my party right now is really not that creative. It's it's uh, Eevee the starter because I have Eevee version. Uh, Pikachu, Charmeleon, Ivysaur, Squirtle, and Geodude. So <laughs> again, I'm taking my time with this, but I'm I'm changing it up and leveling up many different mons. So mm-hmm. I'm not just using the same party over and over again. So. What are some interesting ones that you're uh, raising right now? Well, I got my Kadabra. I got to turn on my game. Well, Kadabra's got to certainly be an interesting one because, I mean, Psychic not as broken as Gen 1, but still pretty darn mm-hmm. good, I'd imagine. Tony, we didn't talk about where you are in your adventure yet. I'm, I'm up right where Megami is, honestly. I just went through Diglett Cave. I just went to get mine, too. Uh, <laughs> so I could check. Yeah, I just um, went back and forth in Diglett Cave now, just grinding a bit before moving on to the next part. Mm-hmm. I caught like 15 in a row. I'm trying to get better at catching. So here's here's my issue with the game. Uh, I, I love it, first off. I don't want to completely bash it. I'm having a fucking great time. The whole point of me wanting this game, like, what, did, what was the last handheld one they did? Ultra Sun and Moon. Yeah, it's just like, they made a big deal about that, and I'm like, well, okay, well, now the Switch is a thing. So I'm just a gamer that wants to play on my big TV. That's what I want to do. Mm. And this was the whole appeal to this game to me, and that's what I want to do. And I hate catching Pokemon with the Joy-Con. It's 
cumbersome. It's not as easy. More importantly, like it's not even like I'm lazy. Like it's objectively not as easy to do. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I guess I'm bad at it too. But it, it's way easier. It seems. I watched my fiance uh, just laying in bed, and she just like just booped it and hit A. And I'm like, Are you fucking kidding me? Well, yeah, I gotta uh, like steer and do all this uh, shit. And- obviously, the tablet is the easiest uh, form of it. But I don't know. The Joy Cons were the same thing as the Pokeball, but the Pokeball feels a little more just satisfying in my regard. Oh, for sure. So. The, oh, the shape bet. and the weight and all that. Yeah. Okay, so my yeah. my team so far has just been throw it straight at the screen. Has <laughs> been Eevee. Uh, Pikachu, Arcanine, Dabra, Weeping Bell, and Psyduck. Nice. Mine's Mankey, Pidgeotto, Pikachu, Gloom, Vulpix, and Alakazam right now. Dang, that is very different. Of course, they all have names, but I'm not going to bore you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We should talk about the trading thing, because I would yeah. like an Alakazam. How do I get one? Uh, yeah, I did this with my buddy last night. That's how I have a Vulpix, because I'm the only one playing Pikachu, and you can't get Vulpix in that one. But me and my buddy did this last night, and I was hoping it would be as easy as, like, trade with fucking friends. <laughs> and it is not. And you guys <laughs> revealed to me that it's like Pokemon Go, where you have to... It gives you, like, a list of eight Pokemon pictures to pick, and you have to pick the sequence that your friend picks. And just kind of hope that you get it. Or, yeah, tell them what to select, yeah. Yeah, because usually in a raid battle, they'll give you three Pokemon, and then you, everyone has to enter the same code or mm-hmm. something, but... That that makes sense. But yeah, I was doing it. I was trying to connect with a buddy last night and like I was just getting some Japanese people I didn't know. And I'm like, how do we do this? And we just <laughs> we just had to try like four or five times and do it at like the exact same time. And it worked out. But it's it's very strange that you can't just do it with your friends because that's never been a problem with all the recent ones. Right. Like you can just connect with your friends yeah. fairly easily. Right. Yeah, ab- yeah. Absolutely. No, I'm sure Nintendo would have wanted you to use the Nintendo Switch online app and Voice chat with your friends that way, but I'm sure that's not what you did. You have to fucking like also have the Nintendo Online to do it. I read. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that that's the thing. I don't know if that's <laughs> that's the <a> thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's a problem for most of us, but it's just I want to throw that in anyone's brains that's thinking about buying it. You have to be worried about that. Uh, it, that is pretty important. I I think the thing I like most about the game, aside from just the reimagination of what did our childhood brains imagine red and blue looking like? I mean, of course, it was, you know, the the liquid crystals on the screen of the Game Boy and all that, but our imaginations pictured it like this game looks, right? Like, it's it's gorgeous. It, it looks and plays great. I agree. Throwing the Joy-Con or, or doing that, it it's not perfect. And uh, actually, I've been playing co-op with my wife for most of the game, and it's it's really interesting to see how that changes things you definitely have like the synchronization bonus that you've seen in the trailers with throwing the two balls and it helps the catch I, rate i hear you go through pokeballs way faster that way oh, yeah because you're throwing two at a time if you do that yeah. but you do have the choice to say hey you just you just throw one like we don't have to throw both every single time oh that's good so, like that's that's an important distinction but you know throwing the two helps on some of those more difficult catches but also you know having the second trainer around when you're fighting those one-on-one trainer battles, suddenly it turns oh. into two-on-one trainer battles. Yeah. And so not fair. it uh, really makes the game much easier in that sense. Like, hey, Misty, oh. it's time to battle. I'm going to throw out Pikachu and Ivysaur against your Starmie. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, okay, cool. But like, it's, it's, you're trading like, the fun you can have with someone for the possible difficulty on your uh, on your journey, so uh, it's an interesting trade there on, on the subject of trading. Uh, but I think the biggest thing overall, as you mentioned before, seeing the wild Pokemon on the screen, it's a game changer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I've seen so many people say that, you know, oh, if this doesn't come back for Generation Eight, I'm going to be so mad. And it's like I, I get you, but you're you do realize like this is going to be probably its own thing. Granted, I would like to see it come back in that sense, but uh, this again, it's it's borrowing those elements from Pokemon Go, and in Go, you see the creatures on your real life world map. Uh, so it's it's borrowing that element. If they can borrow the room code from raids, as you said, like they'll they'll certainly borrow that. But it certainly works very well. I'm glad that the whole cat streak thing. Uh, if you happen to run into another Pokemon, you can just run, and it doesn't break the streak. That's a nice little thing there. I think, though, that encountering them in the wild is just kind of objectively better, though. Hmm. Yeah, it feels more fun just to see them pop out instead of just 
I've heard the argument that it's like, well, it's not as exciting. I'm like, it's more exciting. I'm like, ooh, there's the boy over there. I was always super excited when something just popped out and be like, yeah. When I saw my first Vulpix, I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I will say though, I do worry about the power of this because, like, when I was in the Viridian Forest, it was chugging when there was ooh, a yeah, lot yeah. of Pokemon. So I worry when there's going to be like 700 more of these suckers in here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, right. And the only other thing that bothered me, and this is just a nitpick, I don't know if. This was like this in the other games, but the human models look kind of creepy. <laughs> or at least yeah. there's been a lot of weird posing and a lot of just like you go into a room and like everyone's just staring like at a wall. <laughs> and it's like it's just been creeping me out lately. No, that's but, what they do. The, yeah. the, I, I mean, I don't maybe it's just because now it's in my face on the TV as opposed to the handheld. But like the creepiest one, and someone tweeted about this was the the guy that kind of looked like Mr. Garrison laying on the bed. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> The posing with the leg up, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, again, it's it's a it's a minor nitpick. I just oh, I don't yeah. know. It's just like the Pokemon are great. The people are scaring the hell out. <laughs> My favorite's the fisherman when you encounter them, and it's like fisherman has challenged you, and it's just him doing this fucking dynamic, crazy like I'm fishing pose, and then he just throws, and then it just cuts to him throwing the Pokemon, and I'm just like, what are you doing? <laughs> He's just like, look how much I'm fishing. It's really funny to me. I like seeing the rocket logo too, just like yeah. rocket off. That's always just fun seeing on the big screen. Did you guys laugh at the the rival battle where he just shows up and he's like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's do a battle. Yeah, because I was streaming. He's just like, oh, "I have to tell you something." Oh, first of all, battle. And it's like, "What?" <laughs> he's like, "That helped me calm down." I'm like, "Okay, okay." I thought that was really funny. It's like I kind of <laughs> miss smell you later. Yeah. Well, he's there. He's around. Yeah, and I was gonna say like Blue showing up. It's cool to see him, but yeah, he's that whole thing. Like he didn't look right. I don't mind his look. I'm just like, he's getting a little annoying now. It's like, oh, cool, he's here. And the, now he's just showing up everywhere. And it's like, okay, yeah. but like back off. I wonder what the story point of that is. I'm excited to see like what happens with that. Is that was really surprising. I'm like, oh, you're uh, here. Okay. Probably one of my favorite segments was the whole Bill thing. Because I was curious what yeah. Pokemon he was. Gonna yeah. Be. And he was a, he was a neat arena. And the way he just stood up, it was just really funny. <laughs> and then after we got him back to normal, you can check on Evie. And Evie's just like, what? Yeah, that was so cute. It's like Evie is surprised that, that this happened. It's just nice little moments like that. So we all played the original game, and that was like, yeah, Bill, uh, my fiance thought that whole thing was really fucking weird. <laughs> She's never played Pokemon before. <laughs> like, why the fuck did they do a fly reference in this? I'm like, I don't know. Well, I think he was trying to get into the heads of Pokemon to communicate with them, and instead he accidentally turned himself into it. So. I know, but you, if you don't know that, you just walk mm -hmm. in and he's just a Nito Reno it, standing it, upright it, it, talking. And it's it, like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Well, in the anime, he he's stuck in a Kabuto costume. Yes, and that's his, right. <laughs> and his thing was like, yeah, I was trying to see like what it feels like to be a Kabuto. But, you know, the claws were so small, I couldn't get out of the costume. So, And that's why, I, in a way, I was a little disappointed for all the anime references that they've been making uh, and tying it. There. I mean, it's it's Melanie giving you the Bulbasaur. It's Damien with the Charmander. It's Officer Jenny with the Squirtle and the Squirtle Squad. Like, I was almost surprised, like, oh, like, it's neat to see Nidorino, but I was almost expecting a Kabuto. <laughs> that would have been better, you're right. I guess that would have been creepier, yeah. Seeing, <laughs> like, hi, I'm a Pokemon. It's like, ah. <laughs> what would have justified the rival running out screaming? <laughs> that too. You just see those red eyes in the dark yeah. before the lights come on or something. That would have been creepy. <laughs> also, I don't know. <laughs> You're supposed to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was making a joke about this on stream because I was noticing this too. A lot of times I can't check garbage cans. And yeah. I'm wondering if that was just Pokemon just going like, we don't want kids looking. <laughs> <laughs> don't look in the trash <laughs> there's even this great part on the ssn where all the chefs are by the garbage cans like peeling things and you can't like go near the garbage cans because they're just all near them so like i don't know and all the rooms that usually have stuff in the garbage cans or all the items are just sitting on the floor exactly so it's just like no we don't want we don't want that as a lesson for kids to look which is it's like but I you mean, but you can check the captains and it's like ew you wish you didn't look and i'm yeah. like that's fucking weird that yeah. that's still there that's a classic I, you know, just those certain ones that it's going to be interesting to see the little differences uh, in the trailer. Uh, for I think it was the launch trailer. They do the whole thing, of course, the the creep looking in Celadon gym. And it's like, oh, I love this gym. It's full of great trainers. And it's like, oh, OK. All right. Yeah, it's, it's 2018. That's for, that's for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then if for the for the garbage can thing, I mean, what do they do in Vermilion Gym? Oh, well, oh, that was easy. They highlighted like two of them. They weren't like the switches, but like it's like here's a blue can, here's a red can. The okay. switches might be high, so it's like. But then again, those gym challenges weren't as difficult right. back then either. They weren't much puzzles really to begin with. 
they only started getting more into the puzzles until in like later generations with that kind of stuff. I thought it was interesting that the guy when you go in there is like he's a really cautious guy, so he hides behind barriers. I'm like, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> I was going to say shouts out to the uh, the gatekeeping, at least for the first couple of gyms. So like, you got to show me a grass Pokemon or you have to be over level 15 or show me a level 15 Pokemon. It's like, okay, that's, that's interesting. That's new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know when people don't like it, it's like, oh, it's to help the kids and stuff. But it's like, I mean, I played Pokemon and I didn't need any help. I kind of just figured stuff out on my mm-hmm. own. I played Pokemon and I didn't stick my so, hand in sometimes, track, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, Sometimes I worry that kids don't even find these hints that like because i i found somebody in mount moon that was you're out of pokeballs here i'll give you 10 more yeah and yeah. like so i was like what if kids like don't actually talk to that guy yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot of like points where people just take you where you need to go like after Diglett cave you need to go to rock tunnel and your rival will be like okay i'll take you to rock tunnel if you want and it's like oh okay yeah, yeah. i mean the, the parcel thing was oh that that threw me off yeah i was just like oh Okay. I mean, it's and, not I said, I said, and I was like, no, I'm going to catch more Pidgeys. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could play with the pro controller, though. That oh, just man, irritates me. That's really, and then it's one Joy Con. That's not very comfortable. Yeah. I like the Pokeball, man. Pokeball is pretty comfortable. I don't have the Pokeball. I'm jealous. <laughs> Maybe you can grab one of those uh, like Mario Kart wheels. Oh, my God. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of extra room for your hands and actual uh, L and R buttons. I mean, I actually do that every time I have to use them. Pro tip to anyone starting out, just because I don't know if anyone, a lot of people would think to do this, but you can use the top buttons. You can use R and other R <laughs> or L to, <laughs> yeah. to fucking just hit OK. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just using the joystick and hitting oh, like so use clicking the, the R buttons. I yeah, just yeah. use the triggers. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just using the triggers to progress dialogue and select things because it's just easier than reaching down or up to the A yeah, button, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can understand people not wanting to spend the extra 50 for the Pokeball, though. I, I got it for a discount and a friend discount, so I got a double discount. So nice. that kind of Great. Like, I can't guarantee. I can't. Double check. I'm just saying, like, if you like gimmicky <laughs> stuff and you like Pokemon, it's a fun little thing to have. Again, it makes the cute little Pokemon Center noise when you charge it. It feels comfortable. It feels satisfying. I haven't traveled with it yet, though. Mm. I haven't done that experiment yet. So Can you get a Mew any other way? No, screwed. so far it seems to be only in the Pokeball. No, he's not I mean, under they, the they, truck. They, no truck. <laughs> no, no truck. They, I mean, they have a mystery event thing, so I mean, there might be things happening in the future. Sure. But yeah, I'm probably. Sure as hell, better put it in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to go to the truck to get him. I saw a really, I, th- I found it to be a dumb take, and I wanted to get your guys' opinions on it. There was someone, I think it was on Reset Era, who said. Is it just me or is it weird that, you know, I, this game doesn't have voice acting and I feel like that's really cheap. I mean, yeah, sure. Pikachu and Eevee have it, but does it just feel like a cheap scale? Like they're just, you know, wimping out on to not have voice acting in this game. I just can't believe they afforded Ryan Reynolds to Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that trailer is a whole other <laughs> discussion for another time. But the game never really had voice acting, so no. I don't see why it's such a problem now. I mean, it's- yeah, we got. We got the two starters, but I mean, that's kind of this, the whole deal with it. So who cares? Every, it, you know, people that are saying that are just saying that because Meowth doesn't talk on Team Rocket. Uh, I yeah. That is weird. <laughs> everyone's, yeah. everyone's like, what? He doesn't talk. He's like, he didn't talk before. He's not going to talk on the game. So yeah, I, yeah. I kind of get where they're coming from, from the major NPCs. Uh, because, I mean, we're in 2018. There's a lot of games with a lot of voice actors and a lot of voice work. Like, I'm not looking for Mass Effect where, like, literally anyone you walk into, like, will be able to chat up with you. But I, I do kind of get, like, where's the voice acting? Yeah, I, I'm going to have to There's over, with like, a billion one. NPCs. You want them well, all? Yeah, have... some of them can just be text-based. But, like, at least Jesse, James, Professor Oak, all those well, people. Another that, problem, I... The problem with that also is the Pokemon company for the video games is separate from the actual anime. Yeah. Mm. So that's I mean, a whole, that's a whole other kettle of fish. I mean, Pokemon Origins was dubbed in California, right? While the mm. Pokemon anime is mostly dubbed in New York. But so, Pokemon Snap had Oak. I mean, that's one of my favorite said things. Several things. Also, what? that actor doesn't play Oak anymore. That's a different. Oak. That was the first Oak, but I mean, the whole change was kind of sad. Thing. People, the fan base might go like, "Yeah, we got voice acting, but why isn't it the original person? Why isn't it Eric Stewart as James instead of James Cartwright?" Like, give me I that mean, Ryan Drummond. Wait. 
I mean, there's just always going to be complaints about something. And it's like, why don't you voice all the hundred Pokemon? And it's just like, well, I don't know. It's a complicated Then you get thing. in all the translations for every language. And if we learn yeah. from Dorps Vavoner about a villager. <laughs> <laughs> More data, like each Pokemon has like five different cries. And it's 151. So 151 with five different cries for each Pokemon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It doesn't bother me, but it does it and like not in like that. It doesn't make me that upset, but it does it's a little strange to me because the music's really like well done and the sound effects are really good and classic. But I, I wouldn't even almost want voice acting, but if Oak was just like, hey, <laughs> like he just made a little noise. <laughs> it just seems a little much. lifeless, but it's not like a if there was like a cutscene, I guess if they just said like one or two things, I guess it'd be yeah. fine. Like if Luke, like you versus Lieutenant Surge and you got a quick cutscene where he's like it's like, let's see what you got, punk. And then I guess that would be fine. But like, uh, that's where I'm at. But it's not that big a deal to me. But it does like the the game looks so good and has such good sound. It's it is a little lifeless that it, like no one makes any sounds except Pikachu. Yeah. But it's not that big a deal. I, I get what they're saying, but that's not a thing to get up in arms about. I feel like. And um, yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. It would be a sweet. I, I'm actually gonna gonna go ahead. I don't doubt that the person that gets like, okay, you get to play all the high pitch ones, like sweet. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like uh, straight up, I do actually say that is a huge point against it, especially in this day and age. They should have gotten uh, at least some voice actors to at least do the main quest um, cutscenes and all that. It doesn't have to be the anime, although I mean, honestly, it's right there. Come on. You've already done video games in the past that use their voice actors. Pokemon Puzzle League, not the least. Hmm. So that was a different time, though, dude. Again, yeah, I mean, it could be a different time, sure, but like, I'm pretty sure they have the power and potential to give us some voice cutscenes. I mean, they finally did it for Legend of Zelda. It just feels like yeah, but nobody really liked that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, know. I I was fine with it, but I heard a lot of people complain about that. Well, they can complain about it, but it's baby stuff. I'm like, stuff. oh, Zelda doesn't sound British enough. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that a lot. I was just like, oh, huh. okay, whatever. Really? Like, yeah, surprisingly, yeah. They're like, oh, she's not British enough. Oh, she doesn't sound that young. Uh, everyone's going to find something wrong with something. You know what I mean? Right. And, but like, knowing our luck, like, we would have got Justine James, but it would have been someone from California, not yeah. the original. And it'd be like, yeah. oh, that doesn't sound like Jesse and James from the anime. What the fuck? And then... They're like, we also still doesn't fucking talk. And <laughs> <laughs> I just I just feel like those those are some missed opportunities, especially I mean, yeah, it's kinda like you know, not talking. That seems like a missed opportunity. I mean, you're pulling so many other things. I mean, they're not that much in the game. No, yeah, well, they show they show yeah. up like what, five times? Like, I, don't I don't even know. know. I've also, only run also into Also, Red them doesn't even talk too, so then like it's kinda like if Red doesn't talk, who cares? Like yeah. <laughs> I wish it still sent me out that's right or something. His whole, his whole <laughs> joke is just not speaking. Yeah, dot, yeah. dot, dot. So one more thing to wrap up our, our big conversation here about Let's Go, because Super's a prime contender of someone who has not purchased the game, whether it's for various reasons. But for some people, uh, that's just like the Go mechanics don't really sync with them. And of course, we have Generation 8 surely coming next year. Like that has to be the game that they're working on, that that core mainline RPG. But what are your thoughts? I mean, do you think that this is a divisive game, that this is one to grow and expand the fan base? And, and what do you think about those that, like, this isn't gelling or vibing for them? I like this more simplistic style, especially for Kanto, because mm, it's just kind of fun to run through Kanto and it be very simple and low. I mean, like, I, I think that's what fans didn't realize. I think the the whole point was it to be it's supposed to be simplistic, like you said, and it's just you know it's supposed to be experimental. So like the the company knows like what people don't like, what people do like, and then they can add that to the, the next game. You know, mm-hmm. what, what gets me about it because I really like a lot of it. I'm stubborn and I want to just sit on the couch with my controller and not move because I just don't want to. But beyond that, like the things that they changed, like catching the Pokemon really easily and getting experience. I didn't like doing that anyway. Like I didn't like (laughs) whittling a Pokemon's health and paralyzing it and trying not to kill it and throwing balls at it for, this is way better for me. Like you grind faster, you catch the guys faster. Like I I like that because I didn't like that in the original games, but if that bothers you, then it's not for everybody. It's not fun for the competitive scene. Because now things have just been watered down, it, it comes off to something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it sounds like a lot of us are casual gamers, not competitive battlers. Right. So, yeah. I can get into both scenes. I can appreciate this and 
when Gen 8 comes out and it's a little more complicated, that'll be fun. But I can appreciate this for what it is. And also, we're still getting Gen 8. Like, that's the other thing that yeah. bothers me when people get mad. It's just like, well, just wait a year. You'll get your game. It's it's not going anywhere. I mean, I get that. I just don't think there's enough here for someone like me. But, like, my brother is actually excited about it. And, you know, it's my eldest brother and I'm the youngest brother. And I'm just like, it's weird when you're telling me you're excited for this game. Granted, yeah, he does have three kids, and he's going to be playing it with them. So, Oh, yeah. And that, that's actually another one of the things, just kind of like, man, there's going to be a lot of young kids playing this game, and I think voice acting would have helped out a lot for them. You can pet them. You can pet them, though. <laughs> you can feed them little berries, you hold them in front of their mouth, and they, uh, they eat them up. I think another problem is a lot of people are saying that Pokemon, yes, Pokemon is for kids, but it's the main market is really for people like us, you know, the people that, that started with Pokemon or yeah, like, yeah. you know, and uh, most people don't really want this. They just want more advancement and, but they also kind of want the same thing, even though people complain it's the same thing, but secretly we all want that. <laughs> yeah. For the whole thing about the Pokemon go crowd and trying to expand that fan base, I wanted to pull up an interesting article and this is from the NPD group who do all the video game sales statistics. And I found it very interesting for them to break down the Pokemon Go user base and who's interested in playing Go and do they have switches. So the statistics are saying that over 70% of mobile gamers are aware of Pokemon Go, while 29% have actively played it. This equates to over 55 million gamers in the U.S. with hands-on experience with Pokemon Go. Most mobile gamers still playing Pokemon Go more than two years after launch have been active with the title since its launch. And then basically they go in to say that of currently active Pokemon Go players, 24% are also active Switch players. So you have this whole base that are possibly interested and are learning about uh, Let's Go. They say more than 13% of Pokemon Go players who do not currently play games on Switch intend to purchase and play Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah, that's a huge number of people yeah. not playing a core Pokemon before. And like, think about that. Like, that's crazy. So when people say like, oh, it's, it's kind of off to a slow sales start. Like, uh, this game's going to have a very long tail. You're seeing it as uh, far as just, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the talk, it's the talk of the industry right now. It's beating Fortnite in Twitch numbers right now. Oh, damn. Uh, like, it's it's a big deal. And so yeah, some people may have concerns that like, well, if it does this well, maybe this is going to be how Pokemon is. And they compare it to Fire Emblem. But Fire Emblem, when it led up to Awakening, like that was its last gasp. If it did not sell well, the series was done. So yeah, when Awakening did really well, that's eventually what Fire Emblem kind of became. This is not something you have to worry about with Pokemon. This is trying to continue. Oh, Pokemon's it's, not going anywhere. No, it's oh, to continue yeah, its legacy. Yeah. I could see certainly a sequel eventually to Let's Go, but it's not going to replace Gen 8. No, and it's, I don't think it should. No, no, no. God, no. And I'm ready for you know the, the year of hype that we have coming up with Gen 8. What's it going to be called? What are the, uh, if the starters? Are they going to have leaks on those kind of like last How generation? How cute are the starters going to be? That's the question. <laughs> Will the starters have voice acting? <laughs> yeah, maybe they will this time around. So like, it's it's really interesting to think about. And uh, there are certainly some concerns going around about, uh, I want it to do well, but I don't want it to do too well. Like, this is for the future of the series. You have to integrate this Go audience. You have to turn them into Switch users. Uh, it's, it's all part of the big strategy here. I'm really curious, too, just with Switch in general, as far as sales go, how many more digital sales there are because man, I just think it's easier just to have them all on the fuck. You take, you carry sure. it around everywhere. It's a handheld. Um, I bought everything digitally on this console. I'm still that's a physical person, sadly, but that's just me. No, I love collecting too. I've, I've, but I'm with Switch. I find it way easier, and I'm wondering if a lot of people have done that. I'm not yeah, sure. I am curious. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to not switch carts out. Smash and Pokemon is beyond there, and I'm gonna switch at my leisure. Mm -hmm. I definitely regret getting the physical copy of Mario Kart. Well, let's wrap things up here with the mail time segment. Here's the mail, it never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. When it comes, I want to wail. You can ask mail time questions over on our Discord server or at showmeyournews.com slash Discord. You can also tweet us at showmeyournews. A few questions for you here, Corinne. We wanted to field questions specifically for you. So, Saardran24 asks... 
Out of all the new characters in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which one are you most excited to play as? Piranha Plant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I don't know why. It just seems funny. And I just, I like playing characters that are either cute or just funny looking that when I beat them, people get mad. So I figured oh, if yeah. I had more victories winning as Piranha Plant, people would be like, God damn it, how did I lose to that? <laughs> um, already some level of confusion whenever you play as Corrin. Yeah. Yeah. When people Taka tweeted that, he's just like, "Oh, Curran's in the game." Like, what? Oh, ha ha ha. I've been sitting on this the entire show. Okay. (laughs) Um, but I'm I'm usually playing like the Pokemon characters. Pikachu is my main. I also play Yoshi and Kirby. It's pretty good at Pac Man. Not too bad as Greninja and Lucario, but I'm looking forward to Incineroar. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Did you Uh, see Yoshi's new Final Smash? Yes, I did. Cyberlinks. Fucking great. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I'll, I'll give Pichu a try, but it's, it is kind of silly with the whole weakness thing. But maybe they, they kind of dumbed that down a little bit more. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and Isabel looks cute. Uh, I'll have fun Isabel. kicking people's butt with Isabel. My fiance <laughs> is going to main the fuck out of Isabel. <laughs> Isabel is going to be legit good. Just watch. I think she is. I think so, too. And it's really funny because she's adorable. Mm-hmm. I feel like what she said about Piranha Plant, like just getting beat by Piranha Plant looks. I feel like I'm going to get online and get beat by Piranha Plant a lot. And it's going to make see me that mad. funny clip where like Piranha Plant's laughing at the people that didn't get into the roster. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I'm going to do when I beat people. The shadow crying. <laughs> I think that was uh, some call me Johnny's thumbnail was. A uh, Piranha Plant licking up shadows tears. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it <was> really funny. <laughs> I think I'm really interested to try uh, Simon, Simon or Richter. I mean, well, they're pretty hmm. much one and the same, but just it's a different sort of set of mechanics with all those different projectiles and the range. I really want to try that. I mean, Ridley's my boy. Like I wanted him since day one and E3 was just so vindicating, but uh, I gave him a try on the demo and like that's that's a whole lot of fun. But I want to check out uh, Simon and Richter. It's K roll for me. Yeah. Oh. He, look, he looks super fun. I know so many people that were happy for him getting. I wasn't a big Donkey Kong fan, so I was just like, Cool, but like I know so many people are like, oh my god, thank god he's in this game. Yeah, I just could, I just did not think it was ever gonna happen. So the fact that he's here, it just brings me such joy. <laughs> I'm still gonna just use Sonic <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and Samus. I love Samus a lot too w- with the suit. And um, I'm really surprised how interested I am in Incineroar. Like, Incineroar yeah. looks really cool. All the it's wrestling so stuff, fun. all in Game and Watch. I still love a Game and Watch. I just love fucking trying to get nine hammers on everybody, it makes me laugh. And the bucket, the bucket's the best, and like <laughs> especially in like uh, free for alls when people are just like super scoping, and you can just kind of low key get your bucket filled up and just fuck everything up. It's great. Or throwing bombs in there. Oh man, Game of Watch is the best. He's just so funny. <laughs> yeah. Next question comes from my lovely wife, Sass Factory. Considering your favorite Pokemon is Raichu, Karin, do you prefer the original version or the Alolan version, and why? Oh, but they're both so cute and pudgy. Um, <laughs> they are pudgy, aren't they? <laughs> well, that's one aspect I like. It's just it's just a really big pudgy Pikachu, and just the coloring's nice, and the tail looks really cool. <sighs> I guess I had to go in alone with Raichu just because the whole surfing on its tail aspect is just really neat. Mm-hmm. I also loved it in the anime. Like, there's this cute little like episode where it works with like a cafe woman, and they have like this. It's very random. It's like a pancake racing contest. And they have to carry a stack of pancakes while they're running down a track, which Raichu is doing with ease because he could basically fly on his tail. That sounds like a Pokemon Stadium minigame that I would have played. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I just like the whole, this whole cute background story with it and just its design is very cute. The psychic typing is pretty great too. I- I'm still yeah. partial to the original. Of course, I I'll always love the original. Yeah. I love those shots in the the original Vermilion City fight in the anime of just how this fucking Raichu towering over Pikachu. Yeah, like, he's still not that that big though. <laughs> it's just really funny how they did that. Oh my gosh, how did we not mention the the trailer that had you know the cover of the anime theme and it was the shot for shot remake? Yeah, of the anime <laughs> theme with the Go footage. So clever oh. in so many ways. That's oh, I had to look saying. that up. I haven't seen that. Still. Oh my god, no! I'm, on the official channel. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, Check it out. It's it's so good. Yeah, Raichu is the best. Which brings <laughs> us to our next question from AE underscore double. Who is objectively the best Pokemon and why do you all agree that it's Heracross? <laughs> <laughs> Heracross is cute. Heracross is pretty badass. Yeah, uh, Heracross is, is good. I just think of the anime. Heracross. 
Wouldn't he always just he always just got stuck to trees and he was just eating up the sap? Sucking up Bulbasaur's bulb. <laughs> oh god. Ash always seems to get stuck with Pokemon that have special quirks about them. <laughs> I thought that was James. <laughs> <laughs> the victory bell just ate him every time. Yeah, Carnivine. Well, Ash had hair across that, that would just constantly eat things. Um Oshawa for a while couldn't look underwater. And that was kind of an interesting. He couldn't look underwater, like he couldn't open yeah, every, his eyes. Well, yeah, because every time he did Aqua Jet, he was missing. And then his rival's like, "Well, here's the problem: he's closing his eyes." Oh and man, that's me. Out, he found out that Oshawa couldn't open its eyes underwater. Eventually, he learned how to. Which why he should have just got him little Oshawa goggles. He was gonna find. <laughs> that's why I think Ash is kind of a better trainer than Misty because Misty Psyduck still can't freaking swim. Burn! <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot it couldn't swim. That's so funny. I'm going to say it's Raichu. There's a reason why they don't want to evolve Pikachu. Like They're just scared of what it'll become as Raichu. <laughs> My boy's uh, Luxray. Wow. I fucking love Luxray. I had a really fun experience with uh, just catching Shinx. Because I didn't look up anything. And I'm just like, oh, this boy's cute. And then I just kind of evolved him. And it turned into this great, like, fucking cool line cat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Electric cat. And I'm just like, I love this. And I just discovered it naturally. And it was a really neat experience. And I, I love Luxray. He's my favorite. Luxray was definitely the Pokemon that I needed when I was going through my Nuzlocke run. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just never considered Luxray as like, oh, this is just a meaningless Pokemon. No. Oh, I was so wrong. Oh. He's really good. He's like a really good like physical attacker, which is kind of different for the electric type. Uh, I hope if they get let's go that far, I hope it's let's go Shinx. I'll freak out. <laughs> let's go Shinx. <laughs> let's go Leafeon. Leafeon's dope. Like if you ask me like next tomorrow, I'll probably say it's Glaceon. But I, I always dip between those two. But since my favorite color is green. Let's go. Leafeon. Let's go Stunfisk. <laughs> that's another one of Masuda's favorite it's I, I learned that because um there was one time they did merchandise at the Pokemon Center and it was all Stunfisk stuff and I'm like why is there so much Stunfisk <laughs> oh it's because Masuda likes it and they decided oh, to man. do that for him. he has a pair of Stunfisk slippers he makes perfect sense that there are slippers that exist of Stunfisk yeah, Masuda has way. some funny choices for favorite Pokemon the question also continues and says, also favorite gym leaders slash trial captains slash elite four slash champions slash frontier brains, etc. I always liked Elsa yeah. from Monova. I thought she was really cool and she was also a model. It's always cool when mm -hmm. you get like a little more backstory than just like, I'm just a gym leader. And that's it. Elsa and Skyla were the best ones in Unova for sure. In the anime, I liked Gardenia. She was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always liked Skyla's design. And Cynthia's design, but Cynthia always got that pre-battle theme that goes, mmm, so good. Oh, it's the best. The piano. I, I don't really have a favorite. I like that Norman is just like normal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes sense. Yeah. And it's like, hi, dad. Oh, my dad's just normal. <laughs> like, I don't, just the fact that that's his <laughs> thing. Just normal. And his name's fucking Norman. That's great. That shit just makes me laugh. I don't really have a favorite, but Norman kills me. I, liked, like, I like when Ash beat him and then Max got really mad at him for beating his dad even though that was the whole point. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when Ash was about to beat Brock and he's like, it feels like his whole family's weighing me down. Oh, and like, it yeah. Shuts out <laughs> and all the kids are on his slims. <laughs> Good shit. Um, trial captain. I like Lana. Yeah. I She's don't. really funny in the anime. Mm. Lana. Um, <laughs> in the games, they're kind of, they're kind of bland, but, uh, in the anime, she really just shows how much she loves water Pokemon, and then she does this like little quirk where she like lies about things. She's like, she's like, yeah, I caught a Goldeen and a Tentacool and a Kyogre, and everybody's like, what? And she's like, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the big, big muscly guy that just like trained in a waterfall? Like he just stood in a fucking Bruno. waterfall. Bruno. Oh, that's Bruno. Bruno. That's, yeah. that's funny too. Oh, elite member. Um, oh gosh, I like Lorelai. I, I only oh, like Lorelai cool. because she uh, she has a really interesting backstory in the manga because a lot of the Elite Four and gym leaders were actually evil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I was doing really bad at this Pokemon quiz show, and I was the only one that got this manga question right, and I got like 10 points. Nice. <laughs> and it was, they were like, name the three gym leaders that are bad in the manga, and I'm like, oh, I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like I couldn't get the questions right. It's just I don't do good like like under pressure, you know? So it's Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> totally there with the FBI on that one. I've never looked in the whole thing where Lorelai was called Prima in the anime oh, for some yeah. reason. It's just like, oh yeah, that that was a thing, wasn't it? They made her really goofy in yeah, the anime. Like, like she really was like really cool smart, guy. but she was also very aloof. Super aloof, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think a favorite gym leader up there is Claire. Ah. Uh, Claire is interesting. And just the whole, like, she's a, a badass a dragon trainer, one of the last ones. And it's just like, no, <laughs> like, I'm not going to give you your badge. And that Kingdra is always a pain in the ass. People talk about Whitney's mill tank. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Kingdra was hard. But look, Kingdra, like, you're coasting through most of those gym leaders at the end of Johto. And then it's like, Kingdra needs some extra effort. I never had a problem with Kingdra. I don't know. What'd you, what'd you <laughs> use on it? Uh, My Typhlosion named Tony. <laughs> oh, hey. It's Damn, boring. we got a badass over and, here. Okay, well, and, shit. And my gang guard named Yoko. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I mean, Psychic is still really strong, and I'm just like, I'm just just going to one shot them with this guy with this frontier guys. brain. Um, a lot of these people I like is just because I've watched the anime, the manga. Annabelle is really interesting because she had a crush on Ash, <laughs> and oh, it was yeah. just kind of interesting for a frontier brain to like Ash in that sort of way, mm. and like he just never got it, so that was just kind of funny. He never does. No, um, most anime pro tags don't. But uh, Brandon was pretty cool. He was he was the most in the anime. He was around a lot. I didn't like his voice actor because he always. It's like it's nice to see you, Ash. He's like. Oh, <laughs> 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 he was just always yelling. It was very weird. But he was cool because he had the all the Regirox. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. I in the anime when they have like the legendaries, what was it? It was the was it the Sinnoh? finals or something like that where uh ash made like really good progress and then it's just like nope sorry latios and uh oh tobias tobias oh, yeah and dark Rye. yeah it's, it's just yeah. like okay fine was, is that sino or is that uh yeah that was the sino i think okay fun Don't fact you... he was he was voiced by j michael tatum oh that, that's interesting that makes sense i yeah. want you to know i'm way more casual than you guys and when you said tobias i just pictured tobias from arrested development as a trainer and <laughs> oh made my me god <laughs> blue paint and all <laughs> Oh yeah, fuck yeah, you got to. <laughs> I don't have I don't even know what we're talking about. My favorite is Goku because I try to get Goku in all the mail times. <laughs> yeah, Go- Goku was my favorite gym leader too. Yeah. <laughs> He's a champion, man. He's a champion. <laughs> He's a He's world champion. champion. <laughs> He's fighting flying, right? There you yeah. go. He would just I mean, fight. He would just what, Sean Schimmel used to live in New York, and he he threw out the anime. You can hear him. Oh yeah, uh, he's <laughs> he's in Smash's Lucario. Yeah, yeah, that's funny, and he shoots I mean, a big command wave. He also played this like annoying fat kid that had a belt, and like it didn't. It only knew like takedown, <laughs> but he he still <laughs> he still he still registered it in the league, and luckily evolved into a thing. That's right. That's right. God, God, I wish Pokemon could evolve during battle, like in the anime. So fucking sick when that <laughs> That'd happens. That'd be so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Krabby evolve during the Elite Four or something? Yes, and it was badass, and it learned Hyper Beam, of course. Yeah, <laughs> oh, man, that was fucking great. <laughs> Took out that gold bat in two seconds. <laughs> Abra and Kadabra, the Sabrina staple. What? Like, I mean, that that leak really goes to show like how much Ash was spoiled, though, which mm-hmm. is a good like growing kind of thing for him because like. He got lucky and a little spoiled, and that's why when he gets defeated by Richie with his Charizard not battling, mm-hmm. it really just puts in perspective like how much like it's like, damn Ash, he really didn't really didn't improve too much. And then no. as you watch the other arcs, it's like, okay, he's he's getting there. Mm-hmm. That's why Sinnoh's Sinnoh's great. Yeah, like when he gets to Sinnoh, uh, yeah, I like that mm-hmm. season. Has he still like not won a title? Like besides the Orange League, Orange League is about it. I want somebody in the anime to be like, "That one's not even real" or something. <laughs> what what is this Pomelo Island shit? <laughs> He's a Frontier Brain. He won all he won all the badges for oh, Frontier yeah. Brain. Cool. So there's something. He's won little competitions here and there, but yeah, not 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 a league. He should have won the last league. I heard a lot of outcry Al- for that. Alan, Alan yeah. shouldn't have won. <laughs> Don't even know, man. Pokemon are cute. I like them. <laughs> and it's uh, that's like the summation of this whole episode well guys thank you so much like this has been a, a delight to talk all this pokemon and i know it's a slow smash week we'll get there i'm sure new information is going to slowly roll off uh you know in the next couple of weeks whether we like it or not uh but corinne this was a, was a delight thank you so much for for joining us again please plug away where can people find you online yeah thanks for inviting me it was a lot of fun um like i said everything's under megami 3 facebook all that jazz, uh, YouTube. Like I said, I have a Patreon. You can support that so I can make awesome covers and original songs for the future. And yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, this was this has been great. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.
So you can find Super on Twitter over at Sol Harath. Tony is on Twitter at Tony TH underscore GHH. You can find me on Twitter at Pete Speakeasy. With that for everyone, I'm Yoko. We're out. We'll see you next time. Show me your news.